new thing that we are going to study is the excess methods now excess means what how actually we are going to get or retrieve that information isn't it so basically just we have seen the definition of file that information is stored in the file now whatever is stored in the file we need to access it and uh, we need to read it into the computer memory so we will now be discussing certain methods of doing this process so basically first method that can be used for retrieving the data is a sequential access second is index access and the last one is the direct access from the name itself you can understand how the data will be retrieved so one by one we are going to discuss all these three accesses methods in detail so let us start with sequential access so see here one particular file is there and here tabular like structure is there so normally if you see such picture you will easily say that it is nothing but the table isn't it so what happens is that in sequential files there will be fixed length record like we have done this in uh, databases isn't it whatever structure of the table we want we first create the fields and then we set the size of the fields and then we arrange our data in such a sequence isn't it and this sequence is based on some key field like uh, we may be having some primary key and based on that primary key one by one all the rows will be accessed so let us uh, see the details of this so like i have explained here sequential access means what the records are stored in some sequence like in table one by one all the different rows are there isn't it so like that some sequence is there and this is one of the most primitive method primitive means what most oldest method actually it was mostly used in uh, times when we were using magnetic tapes then uh, usually compilers uh, access the files in this fashion means compiler will one by one take all your code and one by one it will compile it isn't it so compilers usually access files in sequential manner and as seen in this particular diagram a fixed format is used for the records and the records are of same length and only values of fields need to be stored and the field names and length are the attributes of the file structure means uh, say suppose if i just want to store the data of one particular student so i will be storing say suppose his roll number his name his uh, say suppose address and say suppose his percentage so all my records will be of same size and uh, one by one all the means records will be stored in this sequential file now some more things regarding this sequential access there will be some key field uniquely used to identify the record like say suppose i have given you example there will be say suppose some primary key so usually in case of student database your roll number is unique isn't it so this roll number will be say suppose your unique key isn't it means there will not be any student who will have two students will not have the same roll number isn't it so we need something to identify the records isn't it so this unique key means you can say primary key can be used to uniquely identify the record and the records are stored in the key sequence means say suppose after filling the data of first student then i will fill the data of second student then third student isn't it so a key sequence will be there then mostly this type of sequential access is used for batch applications means uh, say suppose like i have given you examples of student database isn't it so means repetitive task 
could be bashed together and they could be put into the records then as i have told you this sequential file was used in the era of magnetic tapes and disk nowadays this type of thing is not utilized and uh, this is not interactive application and obviously since one by one the data is stored and one by one it is accessed obviously it takes a lot of time and there is a delay because then you have to sequentially search for the key match means say suppose if i want to find the date of the roll number 10 so in sequential access i have to go through all these nine records and then only i could access the 10th record of the student so hence this was very means performance was very poor and that is why it is not actually used anymore isn't it then the second method is the direct ra or random access method now like i have given you example sequential access means what means say suppose if i want to access the ninth record then i have to go through the first eight records and then only i could reach the ninth record isn't it but what happens in direct or random access is that i could directly jump to the any desired record number isn't it and that is why this is very very popular like uh, what happens in random access file it provides accessing the records directly means like i have given you example i could directly access the ninth record because there is no compulsion to access the records in a sequence and then each record has its own address on the file with the help of which it can be directly accessed for reading or writing each record has its own address and that is why we could directly jump to that record for reading or writing and uh, as is the name this records need not be in any sequence within the file and they are not in adjacent locations on the storage media as is evident from the diagram see after one it's not necessary second record should be there there could be third record there could be after third there could be seventh record then afterwards second record could be put means it is not in sequence and it's not necessary that the sequence of record should be in adjacent location it could be present anywhere because what is happening is that whenever we want any record we could directly jump to that particular record right so this is the benefit of using the direct or random access method and after this the final indexed access method is there now how to understand this so i'll give you a real time example for this now consider a reference book means if you have read the operating system reference book of galvin so what happens in a usual in in book is that see the different different chapters are there and at the start of the book a complete index is there like this this chapter is there and at the end of your book so you could miss you have seen that there are keywords and you can see that in front of the keywords the page numbers are there so that is the index by which you can directly go to the your desired concept means say suppose if i am interested in learning about batch operating system right so i need not go through the entire book page by page i will just search the keyword and i will find out at what particular page number the batch operating system is there and i could directly go to that desired page isn't it so you can similarly consider that as the index access so obviously as you can see in this diagram a separate index is maintained this is our main file so like the example i have given you regarding the book so what happens is that your contents are stored in a sequence but other than your sequence what is happening is that an index is created for each file 
and what this particular index consists of it consists of pointers to various blocks and then index is searched sequentially and the pointer is used means say suppose if i want to search the batch operating system now if you have seen how the index is arranged it starts with your alphabet isn't it so i will go through a b like that and then i will go to the uh, my word b and within b i will search for the batch operating system and from that i will di then directly find out at which page number the batch operating system is there index why actually it is created it is added to support the random access isn't it like i have told you this particular index consists of the pointer to that particular your required record and this index is nothing but a sequential file based on say suppose your alphabets and then while searching what happens is that we search for the highest key value and then accordingly wherever that value is there we go on searching for our desired key value and we we go on searching it till we find the our particular desired record so uh, say suppose uh, in you are having a operating system book the index will be arranged from the alphabets a to z and then say suppose i will take one more example say suppose i am interested in knowing swapti so this will be my index of consisting means uh, written from a to z and then what i will do i'll just go from a to s and within s i will then go on searching for the keyword my swapping and when i locate that particular word swapping then i will find out at which particular page number say suppose page 433 is there suppose uh, operating system book is of 600 pages so i will search the page number of the concept swapping from the index and instead of reading all the 432 pages i'll then directly go to the page number 433 so this type of access is known as a index access so basically what we are doing here is that we are creating a index and this index will contain the pointers to your main file and whenever we want to search something we will first try to find the keys in the index and accordingly we will then go on searching in the main file so this is the third type of access that can be utilized so in all we have seen three types first was sequence second was random and third was a index access now next we are going to discuss about the swapping now if you see this particular diagram from the diagram itself you can understand what is happening here swapping means what exchange now say suppose this is your ram that is our main memory now say suppose earlier these two processes could be stored here so say suppose in the first instance p1 process was here and uh, say suppose for some reasons or say suppose it wants to do its io operation so there is no point in keeping this process p1 in the main memory isn't it so what we are going to do is that we are going to uh, swap out this particular process p1 to our hard drive and uh, since this particular user space is now empty then what we are going to do we will bring the next process p2 into the main memory for further execution and when we bring in the process p2 this will be called as a swap in so this complete process of swap out swap in is nothing but the swapping so how will you define swapping swapping is nothing but a process can be swapped right swap means what exchange temporarily out of memory to a backing store now this backing store could be your hard disk drive or any other storage device 
and then brought back into memory for continued execution means we are swapping out process p1 and we are swapping in process p2 after completion of say suppose process p2 we may again swap in the process p1 so swapping is nothing but for the execution of the processes we may swap temporarily the process from your main memory to your backing uh, store or vice versa so this is all about the swapping